So dear students, the topic I'm going to take up today is geomorphic processes. This is from the textbook of class 11, Fundamentals of Physical Geography. Now what are the geomorphic processes? So first we must learn the definition of these processes. Earth's crust is dynamic and ever changing. All the changes take place under the influence of certain forces which work continuously. They work within the Earth's surface as well as on the surface of Earth. Now what are the types of forces? There are two types of forces. One is exogenic and another is endogenic. If I say in a layman's language, exogenic forces are known as external forces, whereas endogenic forces, they are known as internal forces. Now, if we define the exogenic forces, dear children, these forces cause wearing down of elevation and filling up of the depressions. Now, wearing down in a technical language, this is known as degradation. And filling up in the geographical terminology, this is known as aggradation. So this phenomena of degradation and aggradation is known as gradation. Now we take up endogenic forces. They may be diastrophic, which may act very slowly, or they can be sudden also. For example, the volcanic activities, the volcanic eruptions, or the earthquakes which take place, they are the diastrophic changes. Now, if you look at the screens, you can have a view of the degradation and aggradation. This picture shows that weathering of the higher up areas and filling up of the depressions. As I've already told you, filling up is known as aggradation and wearing down of the high surfaces is known as degradation. Now, the forces which affect the landforms. So here is a diagrammatic view of all the classification of the forces. Now, first we take up the exogenic forces. Now, since these forces, they work on the surface of the earth, there are certain agents which help them working. For example, river, which is also known as a running water, the wind action, or the glaciers, they are the agents. Look up at the endogenic forces. As I've told you, they are diastrophic. And diastrophic is further divided into aperogenic and orogenic. Now, look at the screens, and the diagram will be clear to you that aperogenic movements, they are upward forces as well as the downward forces. Whereas, the orogenic forces, when we take up, that is tension, compression, and there can be the sudden movements in the form of the volcanic eruptions or the earthquakes. Now look at the diagram. It will show you what is compression and tension. Compression, if you look at the diagram, you can see the forces working from the opposite direction that is known as compression. And tension is basically the vertical movement which divides the rocks into different parts in the vertical movement. Now this compression and tension further result into, now if you look at the diagram, compression which I've just told you is the move force which works from the opposite direction. So that results into folding of the rocks. Diagram is self-explanatory that how the folding takes place. And if we talk about the tension, which is a vertical movement, the diagram shows you how the faulting takes place with the help of the tension. Now this diagram, these are the various figures which show the different types of the foldings, which are the result of the compression. Now, we are using certain terminologies in this chapter, like one is process. I would like to explain what the process is. 
It's a force which applies on the Earth's material that is known as process. And when we talk about an agent, now what is an agent? Agent examples I've just given you, like river, wind, glacier, these are the different agents. Now what are these agents? It's a mobile medium which removes, transports, and deposits the Earth's material at some other place. So this is the action of the agents. Now, endogenic processes, the processes occurring by the action of forces within the Earth, they are known as the endogenic processes. As I've just told you, my dear children, that endogenic processes means the processes which are the internal. Now the question arises, if these actions, they are the internal and they take place within the Earth's surface, now what are the sources of energy for these endogenic processes? So I'll list out the sources of energy. Number one, it's the radioactivity. Number two, it's the rate rotational friction. Number three, the tidal friction. And number four, that is the primordial heat from the origin of the Earth. Now, another very important question which may rise in your minds is that is the endogenic process the same everywhere or there is a variation in the happening? Now, the answer to that is the variation in the action of the endogenic forces that is based on the certain factors because it is not same everywhere. The factors are variation in geothermal gradients, heat flow in the Earth's interior, and the thickness and the strength of the crust. So children, these are the factors on which the variation is based on. Now, under the endogenic, we also talk about diastrophism. It includes the processes that move, elevate, or build up the portions of the Earth's crust. Diastrophism is further divided into the first part is apirogenic forces. Now, what are the apirogenic forces? They act on the continental scale and are responsible for the continental building. Now, the term continental means the large scale area, the large vast area of the land on which these forces they take place. Orogenic forces, they act on the Earth's mantle, and orogeny is primarily a mountain building movement. And when we talk about the mountain building movement, the two things which we have just now discussed, one folding, another faulting. So that is the activity which takes place when the mountain building movement takes place. Now faulting and fracturing on the Earth's crust takes place through the process of orogeny. And all these processes cause, listen children carefully, they cause pressure change, volume, and temperature, which is known as PVT, pressure, volume, and temperature. And when these things happen on the rocks, it results into the metamorphism of the rocks, as we have already discussed in the chapter, the metamorphism of the rocks. Now we talk about the exogenic forces. They act on the surface of the earth, and the exogenic processes derive their energy from sun. Now, since the exogenic forces are the external forces, their source of energy is the sun. And the general term used for exogenic processes is known as denudation. Now, what is denudation? It's an operation of all the exogenic forces which help in bringing the different changes on the different parts of the earth. Now, what are those changes? Number one, the destruction may cause. Number two, the wastage and loss by weathering, mass movement, erosion, and transportation. 
So, all these changes can be seen on the external part. So, that is how they are known as the exogenic forces. Now, when we talk about the exogenic processes, we talk about the different areas and all the areas they do not experience the same type of climate. So, climate has a major role when the exogenic processes they take place. Climate changes lead to the variation in exogenic processes because the climate does not remain same everywhere. Vegetation is also affected by the climate. It is very clear that as the climate, the vegetation will correspond to the type of climate. So, indirectly vegetation is also a part of the exogenic forces. So, within the same climatic areas also, there are the certain changes which can be observed by the exogenic forces and these changes are based on number one, the amount of insulation received on the north or the south facing slopes. Now, insulation, this term you must be knowing children. I will just like to explain what is insulation. That is the amount of heat received by the earth that is known as the insulation. So, that insulation does not remain the same everywhere. So, the exogenic processes also vary on that part. Now, the wind velocity and the direction because velocity of the wind changes under certain conditions and the direction also does not remain the same. Next factor is nature and amount of precipitation. Precipitation can be in any form that can be a rainfall, snowfall uh, or dew, fog. These are all the forms of precipitation and lastly the amount of evaporation. Now, the another factor which is responsible for the exogenic processes is the structure of the rocks. The structure may give rise to the exogenic processes. The structure includes 1 folds and faults, presence and absence of joints, orientation and inclination of the beds. Beds means the beds of the rocks and the hardness or softness of the constituent minerals. Rocks with varying structure offer varying resistances to the different geomorphic processes and this gives rise to the difference in the topography. So, children today we have discussed about the geomorphic processes and this is the first part of the chapter geomorphic processes. Under this, we have dealt with the different forces, exogenic forces and endogenic forces. Exogenic, the external, endogenic, the internal. And they are further divided into various parts, like we talk about the endogenic, that is diastrophism and the sudden movements. Diastrophism, as we have already discussed, is divided into aperogenic and orogenic forces tension and compression, they result into the different formation of the landforms. So, the another important part of this chapter that is the weathering that we will be discussing in the next lesson. Thank you children. Mm -hmm.